A rally held by the Hamas military wing on Wednesday night to mark a year since last summer's war with Israel included an ominous foreshadowing of Thursday's revelations. Three mock dog tags were displayed, one bearing the ID number of Israeli soldier Oron Shaul, killed during Operation Protective Edge. His remains are thought to be held by Hamas. The other two bore question marks. Hamas, it seems, is preparing for a new round of negotiations over a potential swap deal. Israel and Hamas have come a long way since the deal which saw the release of former captive Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit in exchange for 1,027 Palestinian prisoners in October 2011. That was a different time and a different case. Shalit was a soldier captured in the line of duty, and Israeli society still bears the scars of his traumatic five years in captivity, which were dominated by an intense media campaign for his release and the heavy price of the deal. They were very long years, but I thought that the day would come when I would see myself outside of captivity, but that might be after many more years. But there have also been cases more similar to Avram Angisto's. Elhanan Tenenbaum was an Israeli citizen who eventually found himself in Hezbollah captivity after being tricked into what he thought was a business trip to Dubai. I will only say that I must be heard out and it must be realized that the reasons for my trip were not so terrible and I did not commit so many crimes against the state of Israel. Despite Tenenbaum's questionable motives that led to his captivity, including the pursuit of a drug deal, in 2004, after three years as a hostage, Israel paid dearly for his release, along with the return of the bodies of three dead soldiers. The price was 435 prisoners and the bodies of 59 Lebanese citizens. The disappearance of Avram Angisto in Gaza was kept a secret by Israeli authorities for 10 months. Some in the Israeli Ethiopian community feel that this was because of a racist bias having to do with his skin color. Hamas on its Twitter page played on these internal tensions in Israeli society. Israeli authorities maintained silence was kept to improve the chances of his release, but it seems little progress was made in this respect during the past 10 months. The dilemma over secrecy in hostage situations is not new. Last year, secret negotiations released U.S. Army soldier Bo Bergdahl from Taliban captivity in exchange for only five Guantanamo Bay detainees. Despite spending nearly five years in captivity, Bergdahl's plight was barely mentioned in the worldwide media. More than 30 Americans are still being held hostage around the world. Two Israelis remain unaccounted for after disappearing in the Gaza Strip. Yes, this is, uh, this is, th this time it's different, right, right uh, Shai? This is not, uh, the case of the three boys who were kidnapped. Yeah. This is... The rules may have changed a little bit. Yes. And first of all, not a lot is clear, uh, much is unclear, let's say. Uh, you notice those, those dog tags that were displayed by Hamas mock dog tags, of course. One of them has the ID number, as was mentioned, of uh, First Sergeant Oron Shaul. But uh, it is assumed in Israel that uh, Hamas also possesses the remains, some of the remains of Lieutenant Hadar Golden, also killed yes. during Operation Protective Edge. And that would mean uh, uh, there was an expectancy that we would see four uh, dog tags. We only see three. Three. And so there's a little speculation Why about what this, this means. It may be, it may mean that Hamas does not even consider the Bedouin hostage, whose uh, identity is still a protected, protected by military citizenship, as an actual hostage, as an actual bargaining chip. Because he is an Arab. He is an Arab, he is a Muslim, and therefore the rules, are, uh, regarding him at least, are changed. Also, the, the, the situation remains unclear regarding uh, Avram Angisto. There's uh, a little speculation that perhaps he is not actually in Hamas hands. Hamas has denied that he is uh, in, in their hands. One Hamas official has been quoted saying that he has actually exited Gaza through the uh, tunnels in Rafah into Egypt. Israel maintains this is a lie. You know, because uh, from what we understand from Hamas today is uh, that the minute that they understood that he has uh, some mental uh, problem, probably has some mental problems, they released him inside the Gaza Strip, and since then, yeah. they don't know what happened to him. Right. Uh, I think the Israeli authorities are, are right to doubt that uh, version of events. Some speculation over perhaps him being handed over to a different organization, perhaps even that would be the worst case scenario, the uh, Islamic State linked organization, the Salafist group, the Omar Hadid Brigades, or perhaps uh, Islamic uh, Jihad. Uh, this is still on the level of speculation and really the situation regarding this individual is unclear. Nobody knows exactly where he is or if he is alive, let's stress. You know, I'm trying to think about uh, this uh, changing of strategy of the state of Israel, especially in this specific government, when it's a really right-wing government. And we know how patriotic this act of releasing, of bringing back mm -hmm. uh, prisoners who are held, I'm sorry, like captives who are held by, uh, by Hamas. Uh, 
because maybe they're not soldiers, so it's easier to keep it silent, it, it's easier to not actually negotiate on their lives because they're not soldiers. It's interesting. When you talk about the Israeli psyche and its, and its approach to its captive soldiers, uh, it is a, a totally different from any other country. When you talk about the U.S., these things aren't even publicized. Uh, the, the U.S. has over 30 uh, personnel in, in captivity around the world, and very little is spoken about it. Once an Israeli soldier is held captive, it creates major uh, uh, headlines in Israel. This time, it was kept secret or quiet for, for a long amount of time. The Galad Shalit case was very different. Five years of an intense uh, media campaign eventually led to the release, but at a very high price. You know, and how we would like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to uh, think what would be, um, let's say, the reactions from this specific government who is always saying that the most important thing is the citizens of Israel. Mm -hmm. How they are going to justify the fact that they are not going to bring back these right. civilians and to release prisoners for them. Indeed. Uh, I think we will probably not see the same uh, sort of numbers involved. I doubt we will get to into the thousands, as has been the case in the past, though, of course, we don't know where this will lead. We don't know exactly who holds, who uh, has the custody of Avram and Gistu, and we don't know the situation with the Bedouin hostage as well. Uh, more will be revealed, I think, once we, once we do hear some definite statements on their actual destiny. Yes. Uh